Hello Internet, welcome to the Well of Curiosity, a place where we're exploring the universe using science, maths and our imaginations. So today we are going to tackle a big question. Just how long would it take to fly from here on the Earth to the edge of our galaxy? So this is what we're investigating, our Milky Way galaxy, a huge swirling collection of over 200 billion different stars. Now, to try and get a sense of how big this galaxy really is, we're going to break it down into several steps and we're going to use real life spacecraft and how long they have taken to complete their journeys out into space. So to begin our journey, we need to leave the Earth. Now, between the surface of the Earth where we live and the edge of space, there's roughly 60 miles worth of atmosphere. Now, a rocket can take six, seven, eight minutes to travel that journey, which doesn't really sound that long. 60 miles doesn't really seem that much, but that is just to get into space. And once you do get into space, that is where the real fun begins. So let's turn our attention now to something we're all familiar with, the moon. Now the moon is Earth's closest natural neighbor in space. But to get there, our journey distance will suddenly jump from just 60 miles to 238,000 miles. And to do that sort of journey, you need to be sat locked away in a little rocket for the next three days straight. Now, three days still doesn't sound that much, but that's three days of being locked away in a rocket, not much to see, not much to do, nowhere else to go. Uh, but it has been done before, back with the Apollo missions in the 1960s and 70s. But the moon to this day remains the furthest point that we have ever sent a human being out into space. Even though our astronauts have only gone as far as the moon, our unmanned robotic explorers have been travelling even further. And probably the most visited planet in our solar system has been the red planet of Mars. Now, the most famous of the Martian explorers have probably been the Mars rovers. There is still one working there at the moment, the Curiosity rover, but there will be a couple more rovers going up to join it later this year. But at some point, we want to start sending human beings there as well. And the advantage we have, because we have sent so many spacecraft, we know how far away it is. We know how long it takes for our spacecraft to get there. But it's not good news. Both Earth and Mars are constantly moving around the sun at different rates. So planning a journey to Mars can actually be quite tricky. Now, Earth and Mars are different distances away from our sun. Earth is slightly closer, Mars is slightly further away. They're almost like two cars on a racetrack. Earth has sort of the inside track, so it's able to go around the sun a little bit quicker. And this means that Mars and Earth spend most of their time very far apart, an average of 140 million miles. Now, even if you waited for the timing to be right, where the planets were quite close, your journey would still take around eight to nine months. So that is a nine month journey to reach one of the closest planets in our solar system. Now we have sent spacecraft all over our solar system, visiting every single planet, as well as a range of other objects as well. And it's one of those other objects that we're going to look at next. It lies a lot further away from Earth than all of the planets of our solar system. And this object itself used to be one of those planets. And I am, of course, talking about Pluto. Now, Pluto lies over three billion miles away from the Earth. So sending a spacecraft out into this part of space was not going to be easy. But in 2006, the New Horizons space probe started out on its journey and it took nearly 10 years to reach its destination. Now, you may think as we've reached Pluto that we're getting towards the edge of our solar system. But the truth is we're not even close. If I asked you wonderful people to draw me a solar system just off the top of your head, this is probably what you'd come up with. You'd have the, the sun in the middle, the eight planets going around it. You might add some moons, some asteroids in there. But there's so much more. 
because if you travelled even further out, wrapped around the rest of our solar system, is a huge cloud made of billions upon billions of chunks of ice. This is something we call the Oort cloud, and the edge of the Oort cloud, that is the true edge of the solar system, and it's somewhere that we've never sent a spacecraft before. Now, the furthest spacecraft we have from Earth is Voyager 1. Voyager 1 left our Earth over 42 years ago, and it's been flying through space ever since. It's still going at the moment at over 40,000 miles per hour. Now, if it were to journey to the edge of the Oort cloud and the edge of the solar system, then its total journey will be around 9 trillion miles. And the time of that journey is going to be a bit of a problem because it will take up to 30,000 years. So clearly, if we try to travel that distance in the spacecraft that we can build at the moment, our spacecraft are simply just not up to the task. They're very good at looking inside our solar system, but outside of it, they're no good at all. So now we've reached the edge of our solar system. We can turn our attention back to our galaxy, which, as we found out earlier on, it's a huge swirling collection of over 200 billion stars. Our solar system is about halfway between that very brightly shining middle uh, and the edge that we're attempting to reach. Now, the size of our journey, the distance that we would have to travel has grown dramatically to 300 quadrillion miles. That is a lot of zeros. So we've arrived at the big question. How long would it take to reach the edge of our Milky Way? Well, it took just a few minutes to get out into space, taking three days to get to the moon, nine months to Mars, nearly 10 years to Pluto and 30,000 years just to leave our solar system. And if you carried on flying all that way out into space, passing billions of other stars, you would finally reach the edge of our Milky Way after one billion years. So, as I said earlier on, our spacecraft, very good in our solar system, absolute rubbish at the rest of space. But this is one of the biggest challenges facing us at the moment with space travel. We need someone somewhere in the world to invent a better, faster spacecraft to get us out there amongst the stars. And space doesn't just stop at the edge of our galaxy. There are so many other galaxies out there in our universe, but that, I think, is probably something for another video. So if you do have any questions about science, whether it's out in space or here on Earth, drop them in the comments below. Remember to like each other's comments as well. The more popular topics will get made into videos in the future. But I hope you have enjoyed this brief journey through space. Please like, share, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time. But in the meantime, keep asking questions, keep being curious, and I'll see you soon.